Hey, hey, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to whomever, wherever the hell you guys are, whatever time it is. This is John Royce on the host of the Witching Hour podcast. Uh, joining me tonight, a uh, special friend, Mr. Tori Jones. We are here to talk about his upcoming film, The Boy From Below. It's already getting a lot of talks, and we haven't even gotten behind the camera yet. So, Tori, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, I'm excited to be here. Oh, well, I appreciate you taking the time. Busy time of year. Um, happy, uh, happy belated Merry Christmas to you and early and happy yeah. new year. Um, Friday night, right in between the two of them. So I appreciate your time. <laughs> um, but enough of the ho, ho, ho's. We are here. We are talking about The Boy From Below, your upcoming film. Yeah. A lot of buzz, a lot of names. Um, every day you've had something new being dropped on social media you got a incredible cast um i don't know how many horseshoes you've had to sit on or eat but <laughs> my god what and i mean you got an epic lineup coming up i mean you know d wallace uh felisa rose um uh richie ramon i mean yeah. come on come on that, that's incredible yeah so, T tell us a little bit um I i'm gonna i'm gonna give this to you i'm gonna shut up for a couple minutes what you fill us in on everything that's going on with the boy from below yeah so right now uh like you said it, the film just seems to have a lot of momentum as we continue to uh to sort of navigate pre-production and moving towards uh going to camera end of march early april uh so you know, that's sort of where we're at right now. And it's super exciting to kind of feel the energy. And it just feels like people are starting to rally uh, behind this project and just taking it from where it was to that, you know, that next level. Um, that's where that's where we're at right now. And, you know, this whole thing has been literally uh, over 10 years in the making. Um, because this is essentially a reintroduction of uh, the character in the film that sort of put me, gave me any kind of a career, if that's what you want to call this, in an <laughs> independent film. Uh, so I've always wanted to get back to this moment and to finally be here is just, uh, it's, take, it's taken a lot of work. Um, to get some of these people involved was a lot of work, but totally worth it to be able to arrive to this moment and ready to make this film. Well, that's that's great to be able to hang on to it for so long. I commend you on that. I truly do. Many other people might have said, well, I've got notes written down on a bunch of cocktail beverages. It's in a notebook <laughs> for like 15 yeah. years. But, you know, here it is. You've you've pulled all those beverage naps out and you've transferred it over. And, you know, it's actually coming to life now. So now you had mentioned 10 years ago. So the, the character, uh, I'm assuming, is coming from the Wicked Ones. Mm -hmm. is that correct i absolutely yeah. love that look that mask is is incredible I, yeah. I i truly truly love that the look on that so is this a continuation or mm -hmm. or a completely different story but adding the, the same character to it so this is not a continuation of the other two films with the character that we did um it's i i kind of hearken it to some to uh it's not really a remake because mm -hmm. it's not telling that exact same story you know when we made that film uh and a lot of people do don't know this but that first wicked one movie um when we started the process in 2013 uh it went through a lot of changes and we ended up uh the footage ended up getting damaged and we had to come back and reshoot that. So from the time that this character was conceptualized in 2013, we literally, it took us three years before we were able to shoot it and, and really get it done, which was 2016. And then, you know, the, the film uh, premiered at Friday night film festival. And, you know, that film was made literally for under $7,000. So it had no money, uh, no, marketing no promotion no plans of anything like that it was all very grassroots you know boots on the ground type uh promotion and uh what what really happened was you know a, a lot of people sort of started um uh, mentioning that they felt like this character was something that had a lot of potential 
you know, one of the people I've talked about a lot uh, is Mike Levy and Fuzz on the Lens Productions. Mm -hmm. Anybody who doesn't know those guys, you know, they just awesome filmmakers, awesome team, uh, Michael and Jason and Steven, all great guys. And they were actually producers on that first Wicked One movie. So to see those guys, you know, now blowing up with the Terrifier stuff and with uh, Stream coming, that's super awesome. Sure. So but the first, but the first film was really sort of a tribute to Halloween, uh, which is my favorite thing, uh, favorite horror film of all time. And, uh, you know, it just uh, took on a life of its own and, and we had cosplayers and the film financially is still my most successful independent film I've ever done. So I always wanted to get back to this moment and, and do it in a bigger way and do it uh, just up everything up everything but tell a more original story because if you watch that original wicked one movie you see that it is essentially it is essentially halloween <laughs> with a new character <laughs> so uh but we didn't want to do that this time we wanted to take this character give him his own story his own backstory and uh so that sort of began to develop with the inclusion of the video store and taking it back to the 90s so it's not connected to those other films um this is completely a new continuity a new universe uh like people like to do these days so it's its own thing and it's a fresh start good okay well all right so this was written by both you and jaron spencer correct yes but you are actually getting you are actually directing this one now right okay so as a writing team on, yeah. on this project anyhow um I ask a lot of a lot of filmmakers this that that have had a partner in in a project. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever come across any speed bumps? Yeah, M meaning no, I don't see it that way, but you do. And flip a coin, explain the visions. I mean, how do you get through? Yeah, at the end of the day, shaking hands and saying good job. We'll finish it up tomorrow, or I think we're on the right path. Without mm -hmm. someone saying no, I I. I you're an idiot. I can't believe I'm going to let you write it and film it that way. Something of that nature. So I've always, for the most part, um, I've had writing partners okay. and uh, one of those people, you know, uh, who wrote the original wicked one, he did help out on this one as well with some things, but you know, he was that kind of person who would say, I don't really, see it that way or i this is why that won't work the difference is and that's not a bad thing i'm not knocking him i appreciate that you know sure. sometimes i don't have all the answers mm -hmm. uh and he, he was very good about that with jaron it's a little different in that jaron has this um approach that he's like he never once said that can't be done or he would say all right let me think on this and then he would write it and send it to me and nine times out of ten i was like i love this gotcha. you know he had he just has a really unique um ability to make characters feel authentic with their mm -hmm. dialogue and uh, you know i am a i wish that one day hopefully i'll be able to just direct and not do all the other things writing <laughs> producing and and all of that hopefully sure. one day that becomes a thing uh, but it was super rewarding to work with someone like Jaron on this film who just really, I feel like, captured these characters and was able to bring them to life in a realistic and authentic um, way. Right. Awesome. OK, well, um, so the collaboration went well. Yep. The, the story is 100 100 percent complete written mm -hmm. um, crowdfunding. I've seen a lot of updates. Uh, you are that close if i understand from hitting your goal which yeah. is what okay so uh, this compared to your last one is going to have obviously a much higher budget hopefully yes hopefully. yes the last the last film that i did uh here's the thing with this film which is kind of cool is the last film i did uh we had around 100 grand for the budget that was it was about 50 in crowdfunding and then we had like an additional 50 in um private investment so with with the boy from below, as of now, I've completely shattered my crowdfunding um, thing by I think we're almost like 15,000 above what I had on the last one. 
Oh, wow. So, yeah. So um, we're still looking for private investors to come on board and to do this film with us. And hopefully we grab a few of those so we can get closer to where that bottom line is we want to get. Mm -hmm. um, but as of now, this film will be the biggest film that I've ever attempted to do ever. Wow. Um, so, I mean, just with the cast alone, you know, mm -hmm. that's a whole new, whole new process of uh, bringing these people on and, and just uh, really giving them characters too that isn't just a cameo. You know, they're not just sure. there to like us to leech off their name and be sure. able to say, we've got D Wallace. Like when the idea for this film came up, D Wallace was one of the first people I said, I want D Wallace for this film. I don't know how I'll get her. I don't <laughs> even know what it will cost me. But all I know is I want D Wallace. And throughout the entire process that has never changed. Let me ask you a question since you brought that up then how I mean D Wallace uh, iconic actress brilliant actress how hard was that for you to obtain and to get the to get the Hancock signature on on the yeah. contract how hard was that honestly and and I and when I say a matter of money I don't mean that to insult her obviously she's she's a professional for sure yeah. um so but how hard was that to honestly go for someone like D Wallace. Yeah. So D is someone that if anyone who's met D before um, knows that she is just an incredible person, incredible human being. If you've met her at a, at a convention, I mean, she is just incredible. And so the D Wallace thing came from one of the first films my dad showed me as a child was Cujo. Yep. It stuck with me. Sure. And uh, just her performance in that film, just terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, her resume, I, I always loved D growing up, everything she did from critters to the howling, everything. And uh, so I, I don't think you will find someone. And I've said this multiple times who has her resume right. and who has worked with the people she's worked with. Um, she's just incredible. You know, this is someone who literally has worked with Spielberg and Peter Jackson and Rob yeah. Zombie. Right. Joe Dante, you know, so I mean, she is just a pillar of the genre. And one of my friends uh, was doing, he's actually a producer on this film. He was doing uh, photo ops at a convention at the uh, Stanley Hotel. Okay. And uh, my phone kept ringing. I was actually on the road and my phone kept ringing and it was him. And I was like, well, I can't answer right now. And he goes, someone here, someone wants to speak to you. So I'm like, okay. Well, I call the number back, and it's D Wallace. Get out the phone. And I, I lit my reaction. She was like, Tori. She literally picked up the phone. I was like, Tori, where the hell are you at? And I literally, when she said that, my reaction was no freaking way. <laughs> she just completely <laughs> blows up laughing. Right. Uh, she she got such a kick out of my reaction. And she basically said, you know, uh, so-and-so was telling me about this film. I really hope that we have the opportunity to work together and uh, I hope everything works out. So That's awesome. that gave me hope that it could work out. Sure. But honestly, uh, her agent was, uh, I feel like super fair. Okay. And if I couldn't do something. I said, I can't do this. Right. What can we do? And uh, super easy to work with and just, uh, it was a process and we had to, there was a lot of compromise involved with that. But um, I will say, I won't say that. I will just say that it, uh, it literally w could not have been, I was stressed a few times, but I did everything asked and uh, yeah, it went, it went smoother than I thought it would, um, you know, and then so many of the other guys just super easy to work with as well. Um so from a phone call to being added to your roster, that's a yeah. pass. That's incredible. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, and that was one of those moments where when you're making a film, you're like, okay, the whole time people, some of my friends make fun of me for this, but the whole time I'm like, well, I don't know. Is this going to happen? Is right. this not going to happen? Sure. And it felt, felt like the universe was lining up um, right. with, with the phone call. I was like, okay, maybe this can finally, uh, finally happen. <laughs> So you so, mentioned it was uh, at a convention. It was one of your uh, one of your producers. Was this PJ by chance? 
It was not PJ. Okay. Um, okay. It was not PJ. I actually, so funny thing about PJ, we're two filmmakers in the, in a state of Kentucky, right? R- right. Right. And uh, so we've literally ran parallel to each other. <laughs> Not throw Eric in there too. Eric, who is PJ's uh, producing partner. Sure. Phenomenal guys. Love yep. them both. Funny yep. dudes to hang out with. I bet. So, you know, me and PJ have constantly ragged on each other throughout our uh, careers or whatever. Doing but this, this is the first time you guys are worked together, though. Is the that second. Correct? Okay. The second. Okay. He produced one of uh, he produced one of my earlier films. Um, which was Angel, which was very, very small budget, budgeted film. Um, so we've talked and we talked, I think it took two different years at conventions. We talked and I was like, I'd love to have you guys involved um, with the film. And Eric couldn't do it for uh, scheduling and just being busy and dealing with everything that he's dealing with, you know, with with a new Fear's Eve. Right. But PJ, but PJ did want to do it. And uh He's been such an awesome person to work with. He's a great he guy. Just, and boy, does he, he stay busy nonstop, yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Now, I would definitely feel comfortable having him as, as for you, you know, having, having him on board with you. He's a, he's a powerhouse. Yeah. He really is yeah. a great and guy. That, yeah. And that's, that's sort of the thing, you know, is PJ is great at, at connections and great at getting the word out. And um, for a film like this, I needed that. And I needed someone who, could do it and me not have to micromanage it. Like with this film, uh, it's I've I've been more of a micromanager in the past, and with this film, I'm just like delegating. Like, can you do this? Can you oversee this? Right. Can not have to have a hand in this with this. Right. You know, that's <laughs> that's been so great because I've been able to focus on other things with the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, but PJ is awesome, and yeah. uh, I'm so excited he's involved with this. Well, it's a short, kind of funny story. Um, a month ago, month and a half ago, I was, uh, I was kind of knocking on, on death's door. I was, uh, I was in, I was in shock trauma and in ICU. And when I started coming to, when I was stable, I, I had my phone, I'm checking through and, and I'm lying there on my side. And I got a million wires hooked up to my body mm-hmm. and I get, an, I get a, a text message from PJ. He's like, Hey, uh, you know, are you, uh, I'm I'm now you know helping produce a new film that's coming out. Are you up for doing some interviews? I was mm-hmm. like, sure. I was like, here's what's going on with me though. Blah blah blah. He's like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. So are you still up for the interview? <laughs> so so it, it never phased him. But no, obviously I'm I'm just kidding about that. But uh, life or death, he was uh, he he's definitely adamant about Uh-oh. about getting everything out there. Uh, so he's uh he's definitely a go-getter um so anyhow you're looking to start filming hopefully you said in march april sir okay uh continuing back to the show i apologize for technical difficulties there so if you saw a little blip in the in the show um yeah, thank you, Zoom, as always. Uh, but anyhow, we are back. Um, we're back here with Tori Jones. We are still discussing uh, The Boy From Below film feature coming out, or excuse me, is filming is to begin in March or April. Mm-hmm. And so at what point are you looking forward to hopefully, hopefully be completed and up for viewing pleasures? So in a perfect world, we would be done by Halloween time. Okay. Uh, that's a quick turnaround, but I have done it before. Uh, okay. So it just depends on how extensive post-production will be with visual effects and mm-hmm. any CGI stuff we have to do and add in there. So that's the goal um, is to be, is to be completely done by, you know, October of this, year, of this coming year. Uh, that'd be a perfect time considering it is a Halloween themed uh, film. So the, the storyline, um, what I have read online says it is uh, uh, a a horror nerd, if you will, has to kind of survive the night of a of a crazed madman that is mm-hmm. stalking her. Yeah. Um. So I always I, I try to give as many props to to filmmakers if they as they can, 
when they try to film a Halloween night film yeah. uh, decor, and it just kind of puts you in that much more into the the, the mm -hmm. feel of it actually being Halloween. Mm -hmm. Was that a hard, or do you think that's going to be a hard thing for you to do? Or I know you're a Halloween fan, obviously. Yeah. So, so I've spent, uh, we've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars uh, for um, production design. With this, I mean, we literally have multiple. I mean, for me, I, production design is one of my favorite things. I want to be able to fill the atmosphere and I want it to be a real place. Um, so literally, I mean, we have, you know, 20 foot animatronics that we've bought and we have probably 100 fake pumpkins that we've bought. <laughs> we have, I mean, just decor like you could not imagine. I literally have a giant storage building that is filled with decor and Halloween and just totes and totes of, of stuff for this film. So you can't even walk in there right now. Oh, it's uh, amazing. Yeah. So that, and then with the video store element, I mean, creating all of those and, and what that's going to look like is going to be just amazing. Oh, I'm anxious. I mean, just you describing all of it and, and how much you've put into it is exciting to hear. So yeah. uh, that that's something. And the way you describe it is, is exactly what a person like, like myself, I want to actually feel like I'm there, feel like I'm in that movie store, feel like it actually is Halloween night. So I, yeah. commend, I commend you on the efforts. I truly do. Um, yeah. I, I was fortunate enough about two, three weeks ago, uh, the lovely Miss Kamara Cole was on the show uh, yeah. and was talking about the movie. I know she's very excited about it. And boy, what a pleasure she was to talk to. Uh, she's awesome. Yeah. Such, such a nice lady. Um, so unfortunately, in in uh, in a perfect world, you and I could sit here and talk all night and I could finish my coffee. But unfortunately, in the Zoom world, they're not going to allow us to do so. <laughs> um, so in closing, though, Anything mm -hmm. that you want to definitely give a shout out to or a shout out about for the fans and the, want, the you know, people listening that are more intrigued, that want to know how they can find you, how they can help, and yeah. even, just, even just follow along with you guys. Yep. So I'm on Facebook at Official Tory and Instagram and threads um, at Official Tory Jones. And you can follow me on there. The Boy From Below has its own Facebook page has its own uh, Instagram page so you can follow us there for updates. And it also has a private group where we post sort of uh, behind the scenes stuff and they'll get the first look, those people that join that private group. So um, you can follow us there. Obviously you can check out my website, jonestownfilms.com, but obviously the Indiegogo right now is the big thing and just keeping the momentum and people just, uh, helping us get as much for this film as possible. You know, we want to wrap, we want to have everything budget wise by end of January. So we got a month to, to really uh, make a lot of progress towards um, getting there. So, uh, but I think we can do it. I, I know we can do it. And this is a film that's being, you know, riding a wave of momentum from genre fans so that's what we want to continue and so people should check out the indiegogo grab these perks be in scenes be a part of the film be a part of the team because i believe that this film uh not because it's mine but just everything about it i believe that this film has a lot of potential to to do big things well, i definitely wish you all the best of luck for it um definitely please keep tabs any updates or any time you want to come back to the show yeah. Last, last minute push or hey it's done and we got to get the word out um you are always more than welcome uh very excited boys and girls uh we are talking to mr tory jones the boy from below uh definitely keep an eye out for it uh i'm john royce with the witching hour podcast please subscribe below hit that button if you are watching this video uh share the love for both the boy from below as well as the witching hour podcast i want to wish everybody out there a happy and safe new year tori jones thank you again for joining us and um other than that folks looking forward to another good year and i hope everybody out there remembers always keep it evil <laughs>